Okay, here we go. The video you have all been asking for. This is going to be a video on body confidence, body image, the modeling industry, and how I've come out the other side. I've never um, verbally spoken about this, so I don't really know how I'm going to start or where it's going to go, but if it helps just one of you, then I will be thrilled. So strap in and here we go. So a quick whirlwind trip of how I got into the modeling industry. Um, I was 15 years old. I was, and still am, uh, a tomboy, country girl, never really been out of home, had just been around horses, dogs, you name it, anything. Um, didn't care about fashion, thought clothes were just clothes. To be honest, was, and still am, the world's worst dressed person ever. Um, and my school took us to the clothes show in Birmingham for a school trip. And I got scouted there by a number of different agencies and um, one of them took me on and about two, three weeks later I was in New York shooting the Balenciaga campaign. I think the biggest change for me was to go from a life which didn't revolve around what I looked like, no one cared what I looked like, I didn't care what I looked like, to a world where your face, your hair, your body, every single part of you almost becomes everyone else's property. Um, and they decide on your hair, your haircut, your hair colour, um, what your body shape should look like, how you should walk, how you should dress. And I was not prepared for that at all. I think I was quite naive going into the fashion industry and didn't really have a clue what to expect. And I was really shot from zero to hero pretty quickly, um, which is amazing. And I had some awesome times and worked with some amazing clients and had some great agents um, and everything which I'm so thankful for and it's given me the platform today to do um, sort of go into the industry that I do want to go into so I can't um, you know I would never go back and change it but there are certain things that happened which um, destroyed my confidence and the fact that other people took over my body and what I should look like really uh, was quite damaging. So um, this is how I got through that part and got out of it and got to the point where back when I was little when I just didn't care anymore. So a few little horror stories, which I probably shouldn't say, but it's sort of part of the story. And um, there's so many that I could uh, tell you about, but I will leave them for another time. Uh, but I'll just give you some examples about what did happen to me and many other models um, so I had an agent who will remain nameless that used to pinch any bit of fat on me and then scream in my face and tell me to lose it. I also had agents that when I lost 20 pounds in 20 days, lifted up my top, saw that I had bones sticking out and cheered. Um, and I also had castings where you would be stood with literally nothing on, everything measured, um, and again, told that you're too fat. I uh, had a moment in New York when I was 15. I'd just arrived in New York. They took Polaroids of me um, and I'll put them up now. And they told me that I was too fat. So in this picture, I was told that I was too fat. So that's just a few of the things that happened. Um, I then started getting really panicked and had anxiety every time I went to a job, every time I went into the agency that I was too big. I'm quite sporty and muscly and quite broad, um, which I love, but a lot of these girls were sort of anorexically thin and just had no muscle on them and nothing on them at all. Um, so even when I thought I was looking really tiny, I'd walk into a job and still be the biggest person there and the jeans probably wouldn't quite fit and the tops were probably a bit tight um, and they wanted stuff to fall off you. So. It was definitely a panic every time I turned up to a job that I wouldn't fit into the clothes. I never developed an eating disorder um, or a diagnosed eating disorder, but I started, um, if I knew I had a job the next day, I probably wouldn't eat the day before. Um, and then straight after the job, I would absolutely binge on food. Um, because I was so hungry and then I'd get a phone call saying I was working the next day um, and then I'd go to the gym and try and run off what I'd just eaten. There was one part that became very tricky where I lost 20 pounds in 20 days on a diet that I did. Um, 
I've done every diet under the sun during my time as a model and I would tell you one thing, they work for two or three weeks when you're doing them and you lose lots of weight very quickly. But as soon as you start eating again, you put on double the amount of weight and go back to square one and your metabolism goes down and everything. And if I had my time again, I would never ever do a diet. And if I wanted to lose any sort of weight, I would just eat everything but less of it. It's as simple as that. Um, but this one time I lost 20 pounds in 20 days for a job and my agent was thrilled, but then turned around to me and said, Ashley, we've decided we're not going to send you to, to that job anymore. And I sort of rebelled by going, great, I can eat. Um, and as soon as I started eating, I absolutely ballooned and put on 40 pounds in probably two weeks. Um, and I went from 50 kilograms to 79 in about two months. So very, very unwell. I felt absolutely dreadful and like walking upstairs, I was out of breath. Um, I didn't want any pictures taken of me. Um, and yeah, like the modeling started to dry up because I had just ballooned and I'd only ballooned because people kept telling me that I was fat. Um, and I'd sort of rebelled against that. Um, my brain works in a funny way. One of the worst parts for me, uh, and a lot of you have messaged me saying this, is being in a group of people at a party, at the beach, uh, wherever you are, and feeling so self-conscious because you believe people are looking at you and judging you. Um, and as a model, that's really, really tough because people start comparing themselves to a model. Um, and all I can say is when you are one, uh, you know, there's Photoshop, there's uh, hair, there's makeup, there's good lighting and there's a good photographer and great clothes and a good stylist. So, of course, in pictures, you're probably going to look a lot better to what you do in real life. That people start comparing that and saying, oh, well, you know, I saw you on the cover of Vogue the other day, but you look nothing like that. Um, and I actually look better than you. You're like, well, good for you. But, um, you know, sorry, that's my job. And that's what people do. So if you ever see pictures of models please think of it as artwork rather than real life because I actually don't really have an issue with some of the pictures that get made because they are art, but I think they need to be disclosed more as art rather than real life because, you know, in real life you don't have uh, a cameraman and lighting and hair and makeup and Photoshop following you around, you just don't. So when you see beautiful pictures and everything, just think it's artwork and the person behind that is just forefronting it. Before I waffle too much, I want to get on to how I came out of the situation of being told that I was fat every day and um, being sent to fat camp a couple of times and having my whole thought system about my body and every time I walked into a room, I was told that I was fat. And every time I would try and put trousers on, on a shoot, they would never ever do up. And the lovely, like most stylists that I worked with were so lovely and were like, oh, don't worry, they're made for teeny tiny and stuff. But you go away feeling so rubbish and so depleted. Yet if I was that small to fit into those trousers and those jeans that day, then I would not have been well at all. Um, and probably would have taken me a long time to get down to that weight. Um, someone once told me that they wanted models to look like they had been in bed with the flu and a sick bug for a month and just got out of bed. So it's not the nicest industry to be into and I really hope we can change that soon and it turns into fit, healthy girls who are um, just normal. Like, we, I find... I'm waffling now, but I find that we either go from two extremes, from someone who's extremely tiny and skinny and doesn't eat in order to fit into the clothes and is told that they're fat every day, to the other extreme where we're seeing on covers, you know, someone who is obese and uh, unhealthy. And I don't find that we're getting that middle ground of someone that is healthy and is normal and actually someone to aspire to be like um, because I don't think you should ever aspire to be like a model who is tiny and I'm not actually blaming models out here because it's the pressure that gets put on them to be like that um, from agents, from designers um, but I don't think it's a very nice way to aspire to be like because it's not healthy um, and 
equally, I don't think you should aspire to be obese because that's not healthy. Um, and it really damaging to look through magazines um, or to read on read on fitness sites. You know, every single day there was a new trend of yoga is really good for you. No, weightlifting is really good for you. No, this is really good for you. What do you do at that point? You know, how do you know what to do? And my answer, having gone through it all, is do what is best for you. If something works for you, stick to it. You do not have to copy what works for someone else. Personally, for me, lifting heavy weights and doing a bit of cardio really strengthens me, tones my body, makes me feel really good. But for someone else, that might be going on a really long run or swimming or yoga or Pilates. But for me, I know my body needs weightlifting and my body needs to eat everything. Um, you know, I don't need to cut out a food group. I'm not gluten free. I'm not vegan. I'm not vegetarian. My body needs everything. So if you know something works for you, please don't listen to someone telling you that actually their way is better because I think that's where things go wrong. Coming on from that, the way that I found out what was best for me and how I like to train and how I like to look was in 2018, I was asked to do a charity race at Goodwood called the Magnolia Cup. Um, and I said instant yes to it. Like, couldn't believe my luck that I got to do this amazing horse race. I'd never ridden a racehorse before and it was just the best feeling. And as you know, three years on, I'm still riding them. To do the Magnolia Cup, you have to pass the jockey fitness test, which, if I remember, is the bleep test followed by um, a four minute squat on a wobble board with a stick and you're holding it out. Uh, a four minute plank, four minutes of leg raises, uh, I think it was like a two minute wall sit with a weight, um, two minutes of arm pushing, and then you have to go and ride a racehorse as well. And it is absolutely shattering. And the only way to get fit for that was to train. Now, my whole career had been training to be skinny, um, not training to be fit and strong. And I loved the change and I loved the fact that I had a different focus and that's what really really changed for me shifting my focus from being skinny to I've got something to train for and if I don't pass this test then I don't get to ride in this race suddenly without even realizing had a six pack I had arms I had legs um I was eating everything I didn't even realize that I was eating I was just fueling my body for the next training session and I felt amazing like I wanted to be walking around naked all day like I absolutely loved what I looked like but the focus wasn't on that and I think that's what really changed for me instead of every time I trained I looked in the mirror and go oh have I lost any weight I just trained and went oh have I, how much stronger have I got how many more you know weights can I lift today and that was the shift for me I'm not saying that I am body confident 24 7 um, and find it very easy. I still find it very tricky if I'm with friends and we're at the beach or, um, you know, like strip off into a bikini or put shorts on or I still probably find that quite hard to start with. But I've definitely changed my mindset into actually who cares? Like who actually cares what I look like? And if they do care, I don't really want to be friends with them. Who cares if I don't look perfect? Who cares if I don't wear the right things? Who cares if I've got stretch marks, which I do? And, you know, if people do, then eh, I can't really be bothered with them. The main bits of advice I would say is surround yourself with good people. Get yourself a focus, which if you are struggling with what you look like, try and just get that focus off it and find a new focus to uh, reach and to train towards or whatever you're doing. Um, and lastly, who cares? Who cares what anyone else thinks? If you are happy, stick with it. If you are happy with what you're eating, don't worry what anyone else thinks. If you are happy with the way you are training, don't worry about what anyone thinks. You do you and the rest will follow.